picture house now, I suppose rather sadly, is the only surviving cinema in Keasley. We have had eight over the years, not all at once, but for very many years we had six. It has a very fine frontage indeed, with the date 1913 upon it. It opened in May of 1913. At that time it cost between threepence to sixpence to sit in the main body of the hall on what are described as armchairs, whereas it was ninepence or a shilling in the grand circle. I've worked here, ooh, getting on for, I think, seven years this summer. Um, and having never worked in a cinema before, um, but having always had an interest in cinema, um, I found it quite easy to adapt. Um, business, it varies depending on the type of films that we have. Um, the film companies tend to sort of gear the releases for school holidays, the summer time, and then usually after those periods that it can sort of like there's a slight dip and then it builds up again and then it just depends on which films are out and whether they appeal to um, different audiences. Until the building of the Ritz Cinema in 1938, I would say that the Picture House was the most prestigious cinema in Keithley. It couldn't really compete with the Ritz because that was an Art Deco super cinema. There's over one million bricks in the Ritz by the way and that was the first cinema to have a car park and it also had a cafe so the Picture House couldn't really compete with that but certainly up to 1938 this was the cinema I think to, to come to. I remember going to see Bonnie and Clyde, it must have been the early 1970s, and I think there's only me in the old cinema. I was sat on the front row of the circle, and during the middle of a Tommy gun gangster battle, I was aware of movement under my feet, and there was a little mouse walking backwards, dragging half a Kit Kat bar with it. So that told you something about the state cinemas can get into shortly before they close down. Uh, it's easy enough. Um, it's a steady job. I mean, sometimes it gets really busy during the summer, but other than that, I think some of the staff that work here don't realise how easy it is compared to other jobs. Uh, what do you think? It's interesting. It's like the first job I've ever had, and like you meet some characters. Definitely some characters, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Hi, I'm Nick. I'm a projectionist here at the Keithy Picture House. I show films in 35mm at uh, 24 frames a second uh, using a 5000 volt bulb, very bright, uh, can blind you. I also show films in digital, uh, we show in widescreen, cinemascope and Dolby surround sound. This is where it all begins. Apart from when the actors make the film, it then comes to the distribution centres and it comes to us. These are the boxes that it comes in. And inside here, what we have, this is for 35mm. The digital ones will come on a hard drive and get downloaded to the projector, but this is a 35mm and very heavy. There we go, this is the, um, these are the cans, the cold cans, even though the plastic that's the cold cans. The film actually comes in here, so if I read the side of it, this, actually, this film is actually Safe House, and this is real one of seven, and it's made by Deluxe. So uh, it's in Cinemascope, so it tells me what, the, what it needs as well, what I need to know. And the UK code for it is UK92. So that's it, it's seven, seven reels all together, and each one of these reels comes out and is put and uh, joined up together using the splicer. The next one that's on is the Raven. So we need to change the cinemascope, so I'm actually going to use the cinemascope plate and put it in. Okay, at the same time, close the light off, it's very powerful, so I'm putting my fingers right up the projection lens, taking the lens out there. Okay, going to the cinemascope lens, this is the cinemascope lens. Okay, that's going in. And tighten, tighten the colour up, make sure that's nice and balanced. I'm looking out there now to set the focus up. So the focus is now set for the next film that's going to come straight on. So turn all this off. Because that's how finished with. Turn the sound off. Sound goes down nice and gently. People will believe it. Left now. Sound back up with the music on for the next show.
And there we go, we can now unlace this. And now what we're going to do now is we're going to lace up the, uh, the lace is the terminology used for putting the film in the projector basically. We'll lace it up there, back over here, we we'll keep it below the fan, if we let that blow up above the fan it'll just go everywhere. We're over the top roller into the projector making sure we have some frame lines and also doubly important make sure the soundtrack is towards me because obviously the sound reader, the laser reader there has to be towards you. Put the film in there. And rack it up there, making sure that is in line with the top of the gates. We can now set our top loop. Okay, there's the top loop set. I've got a quick double check to make sure it's all right. Me being pedantic, I like to have it absolutely perfect. The, the image is now done, now we need to do the sound. So we then feed into the set around the sound drum. Around the sound drum there, just checking everything as we do it as we go along. Onto the Screen bottom cog now, and at the same time, there's the two red lines there that have to more or less match up for this to be uh, set right. Okay, there we go. There, just double checking everything there. Red lines in, yeah. Happy with that. Make sure all the teeth come through the film. Yeah, that's fine. So I'll feed out through here now, and back in. Obviously, people, you know, when you buy a ticket, um, everybody thinks, oh yes, all oh, the cinemas must be making lots of money because they've got you know large seated areas and they're, they're charging x amount of money for for tickets but surprisingly the cinemas only get a small percentage of that money and um, the majority of it goes to the film companies to make the big million pound blockbusters that they they produce um, so hence cinemas uh, have to look at other ways of gaining revenue and they do this by having kiosks um, selling popcorn and your sweets and in some of the bigger cinemas they sell hot dogs and you know hot food which is a rule we don't and um, so we have to make the money from there um, obviously being a small independent cinema we have to make sure that yes we are able to make extra funds but not pricing ourselves out of the market Five mil is um, is good. Um, granted that the uh, sometimes the the quality of the picture, the clarity of the picture, isn't as good as uh, the digital. But it's so expensive to install digital systems in a cinema, um, and all this sort of thing with three D and saying, oh yeah, films are only available in three D. Personally, I think three D is a bit overrated, uh, and it's a case again the equipment for a cinema, a small cinema to do that is, ex you know, it's extortionate. And you've got to, you can pay all that money out to get these systems put in, but you've got to be able to guarantee you're going to get that revenue back. Okay, inside here we have a hard disk drive, okay? And all the necessary cabling to wire it into the digital projector. However, I already have a pre, pre one already set up. We put the hard drive behind the digital projector. Plug the uh, power into it, for it. All the digital projector films are downloaded via the USB. As you can see the USB cable there. This end goes into the hard drive itself. Again, everyone knows about this, like, like your normal home printer. So it's exactly yeah. the same connector. Power goes into the drive. And what film is this? This is Journey to the Mysterious Island. Okay, we then turn the drive on, that powers up, that's brilliant. Power goes into the drive, and what film is this? This is Journey to the Mysterious Island. Okay, here we go, turn on the screen, uh, pull it up the um, in itinerary of the uh, playlist, off the digital projector. First of all, uh, turn the bulb on first, obviously, to the system on here, bulb on there, straight onto the, uh, just like a computer this bit. Put the playlist, open the film that we've already preset. Uh, these uh, films will come in and we preset them to come on. So we open the Marigold, as that's what we're showing now, is the Marigold Hotel, uh, the best exotic Marigold Hotel. That's now in the playlist ready to play back. I then go to the playback folder and it's just literally just like a DVD player, just press play. Uh, the lights are now going to go around the house. I'll just check that everyone's sat and okay. We open the tabs up gives them a screen, a wider screen, the adverts are shown on a smaller screen, uh, the, uh, this show is what's known as Cinemascope, 
you get widescreen and cinema scope. And even though widescreen is not actually widescreen, it's actually smaller. Crazy, I know, but anyway, this is in cinema scope. So I've just opened these tabs up now to give us a bit more width to the, to the picture, which is called uh, cinema scope. Funniest thing for me was when I was doing ICs and I was walking up screen one and the strap of the, obviously I don't carry it around me, and I was walking up and it got caught and I fell and like, I was like scrambling for like all the chairs that I'd pulled over in front of like 60 <laughs> people and not one of them helped me, they all just turned and laughed. Yeah. And so, oh, it was, no, that's not actually funny for me, but it was funny for the uh, well, One thing that sticks in my head, I was stood behind the counter and this little kid ran up towards the doors excitedly and I don't think he realised there were glass and he just <laughs> smacked into them and fell straight over and just laid there for ages until his mum came and picked him up. <laughs> There's too many things going on here. That, you just don't even yeah. remember. <laughs> And then there was one time we had uh, a family in watching, I think it was Wallace and Gromit. And um, this lady, she was she was a grandma, uh, had come in with the, the grandchildren and she'd sat and watched it and she, she knew she was likely to fall asleep. So she decided to take her false teeth out and put them on her lap. Because, um, you know, she didn't like to sleep with them. In. And uh, she'd got up during the film forgetting that they were on a lap to go to the ladies and then came back. And of course, the place is dark. Oh, where's my teeth? So I had to come down to the screen with a torch after the film had finished to hunt for a set of false teeth. We found them, but four rows down. But uh, we did find them. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's like, you know, you get a different thing every day. So I've never had to look for false teeth before. Oh my god, now you're taking me back. Look at Back to the Future's got to be mine. That was my favourite. I just love the Back to the Future. But then again, that coincides with my theory of the way things are life, because I love science and I love science and technology and that incorporates it. Ice Station Zebra, and this would be 19, I think, 69, 1970. Ice Station Zebra, a thriller based on an Alison McLean film. Uh, starring Rock Hudson and Ernest Brognine, all about the Cold War, sort of like Russians and Americans fighting over a satellite um, that had sort of like decided to fall to Earth. And um, I was just absolutely enthralled by it. This is difficult because there are so many. Um, I would say, well, I can get them on DVD now, you see. Uh, Visconti's The Leopard. I think would would rate very very high indeed a 1960s film the Risorgimento in Sicily uh, but just the, the Red Badge of Courage the John Huston film the American Civil War um, I mean I have these on on DVD and I watch them over and over again George of the Jungle <laughs> I love that Yeah, it was with my dad and he got um, the video and it was me and my dad and my elder sister we just sat and watched it. Oh, I just loved it so much. Um, for me, it's probably Terminator 1. And, uh, 